Hey everybody, Mark Edward Lewis here from cinemasound.com. How do we keep control over hundreds of audio tracks when we're in a non-linear editor like Adobe Premiere Pro? Well, we know how to do this in any digital audio workstation like Adobe Audition using busing, but how do we do that in a non-linear editor? I'm gonna show us how to do that right now. All right, we're here in Adobe Premiere Pro, and as you can see, I've got the audio mixer up. Uh, this is not the clip mixer, but rather the track mixer. Each one of these tracks here gets a special fader along here, uh, an independent volume control. And that's one of the things that makes Premiere Pro super useful. It's got all kinds of audio implementation and plugins available, many of which are found in the powerful digital audio workstation, Adobe Audition. But I've got a really complicated timeline here. Let me just show you. We've got one video clip, yay. And this is from the trailer from Star Trek Axanar. But if we scroll down, you can see many, many audio tracks down to about 120 tracks from stems of music to lots and lots of sound effects and then finally some voiceover. Let me just play this for you so you get an idea of what we're talking about. You're just a witness to whatever's coming your way. So let's take a look at this. Obviously, there's some voiceover here. You're just a witness to whatever's coming. Your and that's here on the voiceover channels. And then we've got tons and tons and tons of sound effects here. Let's just play and you can see. And then the music at the very end there. Actually, it looks like most of these sound effects are just here down to about track 20 or so. Let's just check that out one more time because that's fun. You're just a witness to whatever's coming your way. Now, if the director came to us and they were like, hey, we like the sound effects, but we want them all turned down a little bit. Or we want all the voiceover up. Or we want all the music tracks. Like, look down here. Here's where all the stems are for all the, all the music. There's about, I don't know, 32 tracks of stereo. Lots and lots of stuff. Well, we could sit there and turn down every one of these faders, you know, or do, whoa, do all kinds of automation or whatever. Nonsense. What we want to do is be able to group them together into a bus. And it has nothing to do with traveling across town or anything like that. Just we group them together and then we have not only control over their volume, but we also have control over their sound. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So just for ease, let's just start with the voiceover. And I've just got two channels of voiceover here, so it's pretty simple. We're going to scroll up here. Now, we've got some plugins up here. And this is sort of this area up here is the plugin section. Now, how do we get to this section, you ask? Good question. Normally, your uh, a mixer window looks like this. And if you look here at this little arrow that's just there, when we click on it, we get both plugins and bus assignment and master output. So these are the plugins. I've got, you know, parametric EQ and the little, uh, well, massive compressor on the voiceover. What we can do is go here now to the sends. And we want to say well, we're in stereo for now, but you could do this in 5.1. Create a stereo submix. Bang. Now what that does is gives me a special knob that I could send this entire channel to this submix. Now where did that show up? We're going to scroll all the way to the right here, scroll all the way down, and here it is, submix. We're going to label this voiceover bus. We don't want to send, excuse me, there. We don't want to send uh, this channel via the sends, I know, from the Department of the Redundancy Department. Instead, we'll say, once we set that up, none, and go to master, and then say voiceover bus. Now that we've created the voiceover bus, now we have the ability to go there. And, and once there, this channel's full output now goes to the submix channel. So let's come slide over here. We'll come down here, and we'll just play the voiceover, soloing it. You're just a witness to whatever's coming your way. And now you can see the voiceover bus is going to the master output itself. So if we did this with the second voiceover channel, once created, it also can go to the voiceover bus. And uh, this is just some unedited stuff. Sometimes you look outside and you see a storm coming. It's also now going to the voiceover bus. So that's great. So now we have uh, both of these voiceover channels going 
to this bus. Now, why do we care? Well, what it allows us to do, and in fact, I'll just make a mess of this here. We're just going to slide this over so we can hear both at the same time. Solo both of them. You're just a witness to whatever's coming your way. We can hear all of them happening here. And if I solo this, you're just a witness. We can solo just the voiceover. But the other thing it allows me to do is automation if I choose to turn all the voiceovers up or down, which is super, super helpful, or pan them, or more importantly yet, be able to add an overall EQ or compression to the voiceovers all at once. So if I wanted to add a nice uh, kind of honky sound here to the voiceovers, I could turn this way up and make it way wide, and then we get this. Just a witness to whatever's coming your way. And all the voiceovers get that, obviously. We would want to make it sound better, not worse. All right, let's talk about the sound effects now, of which there are bazillions, and we probably want to group those in particular because there's so many of them. Voiceover in this case, not so much. We do the same thing. Let's find the very first sound effects track. That's this right here. Pretty cool. And we'll just take it as an example. We'll scroll up. And of course, we would do this before we really start mixing. We're going to say the same thing, create stereo submix, and we'll turn this off. We can do that because we know it's been created over here on the right. There's submix two. We're going to call this SFX bus. And then we will go and do this. Oh, wait, one thing. There's sound effects bus. Now it's going out the sound effects bus left and right. However, we wished it were panned. Uh, in this case, it was mono. We can do the same with each one of these. All of the sound effects, we just go one at a time. So all of them, as you can see, is pretty fast. I'll come back in a second once I have all these put together. All right, now we have all of the sound effects going to the sound effects bus. Yay, like this. And so if we go over here and look at the sound effects bus and go through the sound effects. They're all happily there. And then we do the same thing for the music. We're going to find where the beginning of the music is right here. There's the metronome. We'll leave that off. Here's the reference that we had, which you can see here. Uh, go up. There's the metronome, and there's the reference just there. So we'll do the same thing. We'll go, hey, scroll up a little bit more. Right here, we'll say make a stereo submix. There's submix three. We'll go over here, and we will call it MX bus. And then we will assign all of the music tracks to it. Again, once we get here, there's MX bus. And I'll be right back after I've done this. And some of you may be asking, well, wouldn't you want it to go to maybe the MX bus and the master bus? And the answer is you might. But generally, we wouldn't want separate sound going to the master that we didn't have control over. And unless it's going to this master bus, um, we don't have control over it except from an individual level. And, you know, that's useful um, if you want kind of separate control over some kind of an instrument or dialogue or, you know, a sound effect that really needed its own kind of uh, automation. But you can do that anyway on the individual channel and, or clip for that matter, and have it go to the specific bus that you want and have a maximum value. Now, what's great about this is you can also route, now here's a voiceover sound effects and, and, and uh, music bus. You can also route these to another bus if you wanted to process them all independently before they got to the master bus. So let's solo music now and see how we do. Beautiful, just music, even though the sound effects banging away, only music. So now that we have all these put together, we can have maximum control. So let's put the music into touch mode. Obviously, we would want to make it better, not worse. But you can see all of the tracks being moved up and down together. We can also carve out of the music itself and the sound effects where we know the dialogue sound will live. And we've talked about this multiple times on many different videos, uh, doing notch EQ, what we like to call notch EQ, pulling the dialogue fundamental frequencies out of the music. Uh, I'm just making this up from just general experience. And then amplifying frequencies where we know the dialogue is not going to live. So here's the music with this new crazy EQ attached to it. 
That's the MX bus. We'll solo. Notice the automation. Crazy, crazy automation. But now with this put together, you're just a witness to whatever's coming your way. Now notice I option dragged the parametric EQ over from one bus to the next. Now the sound effects also have a dialogue notch EQ, just as simple as option or alt dragging over and you're good to go. Doing this kind of busing really makes things super fast when you get into the mix. You're going to want to have all kinds of buses. In this case, not just voiceover sound effects and, and music. Those are the basic three. But also if you had a lot of tracks with ambiences or Foley, you'd want to break those out as well. And once you get to this master, as always, we want to be able to add some kind of a hard limiter, as we talk about in this uh, cinema sound education, so we never go over zero and get that call from quality control. Nobody, nobody, nobody wants that. And that way we can turn it up a little bit louder and not go over zero. Not over zero, yay, thanks for limiting. All right, so that's the basics of busing. I like to say to the cinema sound members, organize or die. And it's even more important in a non-linear editor like Premiere Pro when we have hundreds of tracks to be able to not only stay organized, but also keep control and being able to move tracks up and down, EQ them, all kinds of other things on the whole and by discipline. Hopefully this video has been helpful to you, and if so, please subscribe to us here at the Cinema Sound channel on YouTube. And come visit us at cinemasound.com where we have hundreds and hundreds of articles and videos to help you get that unfair competitive advantage in the multimedia marketplace. Until then, we'll see you in the edit suite.